Hi, today is Tuesday, October 6th, and we started with our chapter two math book. So please get that out. For homework, students should have um, finished page 94 and 95. So I'm gonna go over those problems. First off, we always want to label our picture graph. We don't have numbers, so we want to figure out what the numbers are. So each check mark is five tickets, so we know we're skip counting by fives. Number of tickets sold. So we are working on number of tickets sold for these three classes, Ms. Brown's, Mrs. Gold's, and Mr. Castro's. So we want to skip count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45 tickets were sold by Miss Brown's class. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 tickets were sold by Mrs. Gold's class. And 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 tickets were sold by Mr. Castro's class. Now the questions will go a lot smoother since we already have our numbers. So students at Barnes School are performing in a play. The picture graph shows the number of tickets each class has sold so far. So that is just explaining what's going on in our graph. Our first question, how many tickets were sold all together? Explain how you found the total. So we wanna do cubes. We underlined our question, check off. Circle our key numbers. Um, well, if we're fig figuring out our total key numbers that are all the tickets, then we write down all the tickets. So we have 45, 25, and 30. We box the math verb all together, which is adding. So when we are evaluating, setting up our math problem, we know we're going to add all of them together. And then we solve for S. So 45 plus 25 plus 30 is 100. So 100 tickets. Number four, choose the name from each box that makes the sentence true. Five fewer tickets were sold by Mrs. Gold's class, who Mrs. Gold sold 25, than Mr. Castro's class, who sold 30. So what we would do is we had to look up at our graph. And where is there a five ticket difference? Well, 25 and 45. That's 25, 35, 45. That's a 20 ticket difference. What about 30 to 45? That's a 15 ticket difference. But 25 to 30, that's a five ticket difference. And we're looking for five fewer. So who has five? Who has the most out of Mrs. Gold and Mr. Castro? Who has the most? Well, Mr. Castro does. So he's going to have the most tickets. And so Mrs. Gold has the fewer tickets. Question five, how many more tickets were sold by Miss Brown's class than Mr. Castro's class? We do our cubes. Underline the question. The whole problem is the question. We don't need to. Circle our key numbers. Well, we have Mr. Castro's class and Miss Brown's. So we go up to Miss Brown's, it's 45. Mr. Castro is 30. We need a box or math for we have than, than means to subtract. So let's evaluate and create a problem. We're gonna do 45 subtract 30. Then we're gonna solve for S. 45, 45 subtract 30 is 15. So 15 tickets. Don't worry about number six. Page 95, we went over. Use the frequency table for questions seven and eight. The pet shop keeps track of the number of fish it has for sale. The frequency table, this is our frequency table because we have numbers, shows how many fish are in three tanks. Tank one, tank two, tank three. All the fish in the tank, okay? Use the data in the table, so use these numbers to complete the picture graph. We always write the same title. So fish and tanks, fish and tanks. We keep the same category. The category is tank. So we write tank one, tank two, tank three. They gave us the key. So they made it less challenging. Key, 
Each circle is two fish, so we are going to skip count by two. Then that means half a circle is one fish because half of two is one. Tank one has 16, so we're going to skip count and stop when we get to 16. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. We stop. Next is 9. 2, 4, 6, 8, and then half of a circle, 1. 8 plus 1 is 9. Tank 3. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Tank 3 has 12 fish. Part B, how many pictures did you draw for tank two? Explain. I drew four circles, one, two, three, four, and half of a circle. There's half of a circle. All right, question eight. Each tank can hold up to 20 fish. How many more fish can the pet shop put in three tanks? So it's saying, it's a three step problem, right? We need to figure out how many total fish can the tanks carry. There are three tanks. We know there are three tanks because tank one, tank two, tank three. Each can hold 20 fish. That's why I wrote 20, 20, 20. So we need to find out how many fish total can the tanks hold. So we add 20 plus 20 plus 20, which is 60. All right. We know that the, the, the tanks can hold 60 total, but we need to figure out well, but there are already fish in those tanks. But tank one can hold four more fish. Tank two can hold 11 more fish. Tank three can hold 12 more fish. So what you could do is add all these numbers together. So I have 16 plus 9 plus 12. So there's 37 total fish in the tanks. But we need to get to 60. So you do 60 subtract 37. Zero is less than seven, so you need to borrow. The six turns into a five, or zero turns into a 10. 10 subtract seven is three, five subtract three is two. So 23 more fish can go in these tanks. Page 96 we did together, only nine and 10. So we're only doing nine and 10. Use the bar graph for nine, 10. And then we're not going to do the rest. We need to label all our bars first. So the flute has six. So you go to the end of the line, draw it down to six. Drums go all the way over, go down to 10. So 10. Piano, oh, it's in between eight and nine, but we know nine, I'm sorry, eight and 10. We know nine is in between eight and 10. So nine. And guitar, go all the way over to 10. Number nine, three more students play piano than which other instrument? We have to do cubes. The whole problem is the question, so we don't need to underline it. We need to circle our key numbers. Three and then piano. How many instruments of pianos? We have nine, so that's where we get nine. Our math verbs, than, means to subtract. So we need to evaluate and think. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to subtract 9, subtract 3, which gives us 6. But it's asking for an instrument. It's not asking for a number. So what instrument shows 6? Flute. So our answer is flute. Number 10. The same number of students play which two instruments? Well, just look at your graph. Guitar and drums. Or drums and guitar. That's fine. There's 10 for both. You're not doing 11 or 12. Turn the page over to page 97. 97. And all you are doing here is turning your frequency table into a bar graph. Okay. So I want you to go ahead and do that. You can do that on your own. Here's mine if you need help. All right, and then so for homework in your um, third grade math, weeks eight and nine, pull that out, put your name on it, my new name, but you could still call me Miss Hester, but Mrs. Grimsley. Turn to the first page. It is our candy graphing booklet. 
the frequency table's already done. This is going to help you fill out the rest, all right? Turn the page. You have a vertical bar graph, which means up and down. If you look at your frequency chart, M&Ms have five votes. Um, the papers got cut off, so the scales on the side are gone. So what I want you to do is have each box count as one. So we have five for m and so one, two, three, four, five, and that's what I drew. So you're gonna finish Reese's Lollipop, Skittles, and Gum. Then for the horizontal bar graph, we have m and at five. So we draw that line, color it in. You're gonna finish the rest. Line plot, I wrote five on the bottom so I wouldn't forget. Okay, m and is five, so I draw five X's above m and So one, two, three, four, five. And then you're going to answer the questions. Maximum means greatest. So what candy had the greatest number of votes? Minimum means least. So what candy had the least number of votes? That's an H. So how many total people voted in the candy survey? What candy types had more than four votes? And what is the difference in votes between Reese's and Skittles? Difference means subtract. That math verb means subtract. So that is your math homework. Oops. Then, I just ripped it on accident. We have third grade grammar, weeks eight and nine. Put your name on it. On the back cover, or on the back of the cover, I forgot to put page numbers, is context clues. So we did this in class. The woman was irritated. She had been waiting in line at the store for 10 minutes and someone cut in front of her just before she reached the salesman. Irritated, we said means annoyed. So if you've been waiting in line for 10 minutes and then someone cuts you off right when it was your turn, that would not make you happy. So a synonym could be annoyed, but you're using your clues around the word to help you figure out its meaning. So here are the directions. First, you're gonna read the sentence with the underlined word. Okay, so we read the sentence. Circle the context clues in the sentence that help you decide the meaning of the word. So you can, this whole sen these whole two sentences help me figure it out. She is describing how she is irritated, how she's annoyed. Okay, and then write, for number three, write a word that means the same as the underlying word in the space provided. So you're writing a synonym. Synonym for irritated can be annoyed. So number one, the man was cheerful. His laugh could be heard from across the room. So laugh is gonna help us figure out what cheerful means. You are not gonna be cheerful and um, be crying, right? So laugh could mean happy or full of cheer. So cheerful means happy or full of cheer. Number two, the dog growled and showed his teeth. He became enraged when they took his bone. Growled and showed his teeth. A dog's not going to growl and show their teeth when they're happy. So enraged can mean mad or angry. Three, Lisa wrote her private thoughts in her journal. She didn't want anyone to see what she had written. Private. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means, but this sentence helps me. She didn't want anyone to see what she had written. So private could mean like being alone, something personal, maybe a secret that just you know. These all could be meanings. And number four, the baby was imitating her big sister as she danced around the room. She was trying to dance exactly the same way. So we circle exactly the same way, and that means copying. So imitating must mean copying. Okay, and then you turn it, and this page is homework. I want you to finish this all. The one that the first problem is overjoyed. So that is homework, the whole page. We had to walk to learn. And then in your wonders book, I'm gonna just have you read it and go over the vocabulary because my voice is starting to really hurt. So I can't read, I don't think I can read the story another time. But it is on page 54 and it's room to grow. So I want you to read this story and add all the highlighted words. 
look up the definition because you did the you did the definition in your practice book. Oops. Oops. Page 21. Made that as your definitions. And that is what we did today. Thank you so much.